Okay, step two stuff. Wave. Family shopping trip had lasted most of the morning, and you still had to unload everything from the trunk before you could go enjoy the afternoon. You cradled another bag in your arms as you headed towards your house. It was one of the heavier bags from the grocery store, loaded with fresh apples, ripe tomatoes, a bunch of carrots, and even half a watermelon. Ma came out the front door and paused just ahead of you. No Need any help with that, Risa? I can bring it the rest of the way if you want me to. Yes, please, it would be helpful. Yes, please, it was just too heavy. No, I've got it. You were doing fine. No, I've got it. You could just manage to hold it. You eagerly agreed with a nod of your head. You needed someone else to take it. You didn't say anything. You could finish the job, no problem. Ma stepped forward to take the bag from your arms, and you headed back to the car to grab a new one. This time, you got a smaller bag with a loaf of fresh bread and a couple of packets of dried pasta spirals. You passed Ma again on your way back to the house, and she gave you an encouraging grin and rustled her fingers through your red hair. You set the next bag on the counter. Your older sister began to root around inside for the, the contents with a sigh. How much is left? Still a few more bags. With a huff and a puff, Elizabeth continued putting away the groceries, and you retreated out of the kitchen before you could become a target of her bad mood. Be careful. Careful, Risa. You hadn't been looking where you were going and bumped right into Mom, almost stepping on her toes to boot. Sorry. I can give you a pass this time, but be sure to watch where you're going. If you run into the wrong person, you might get your license revoked. She grinned at the bad joke as you continued through, through the door. Outside, Ma started to organize what remained and putting back any loose objects that had fallen out during the trip. When you stepped up to the trunk beside her, she took in a big breath of air, her dress gently swaying around in the breeze. It's a shame. It's a shame we had to spend the morning cooped up in that shopping center. It's a beautiful day, don't you think? You tilted your head to the sky, gazing at the clear blue expanse. Yeah, it is. Days like today are my favorite. It's too hot. I wish it was raining. I like it when it's stormy the best. You thought of the past winter, remembering the nip of cool air that would travel off the sea. It didn't snow in Sets Up Bird, but being wrapped up in bed listening to the thunder and lightning gave you a certain sense of peace. I'm impressed you can enjoy something like that. It's a good way to think. You smiled at her, turning back to the trunk to help out with the last of the bags. Oh, hi, Cove. You noticed Mom wave over at Cove, who had just exited his front door, his surfboard propped up under one arm. Let me see, surfboard and wetsuit, where might you be off to on this beautiful day? Cove hesitated, looking a little startled at having been noticed. Nice. But then he waved, even though you could tell he was in a hurry. Hey. Hey. Hi, Cove. That was the length of your conversation with him. Cove still exchanged a couple more words with your parents from across the driveway. After that, he adjusted the surfboard under his arm a little, getting a better grip on it. I've got to go down to the beach before the wind turns. With a last wave goodbye, Cove turned and headed down the road toward the beach. Take care. Take care, sweetie. He continued to look the way he went as you became lost in thought. You were also going to go hang out at the beach that afternoon. You wanted to hang around the house. <laughs> like, <laughs> social anxiety. The shopping trip had left you feeling a little tired, an afternoon relaxing in your air-conditioned house sounded like a great plan. But you couldn't do it just yet. There were still a few more bags left to carry in. You picked up as many as you could manage, which wasn't very much, truthfully. You had to make extra trips to get it all done, but there was no other option for it. Inside, you were greeted by an annoyed scoff. Is that everything now? No. Not quite, Elizabeth. It won't be much longer. I'm sick of carrying bags. Can I stop bringing stuff in? If it's so bad for you, we can switch roles. Elizabeth always gets the easy job. You were happy to help whatever you could. You simply left to grab another bag. It wasn't the best chore in the world, but you knew your moms appreciated the help. The sooner you could get everything done, the sooner you'd be able to spend the afternoon doing whatever you wanted. I'm going back out. It wasn't long before each of the bags had been carried in and their contents were stored away. Elizabeth was already walking away. Finally! Thank you for your help, you two. We couldn't have done it without you. You're so strong carrying in all those bags, Risa. Oh, thanks, Mom. Ma. Elizabeth rolled her eyes. How about some lunch? With everything we bought today, we can make pretty much anything we want. I think the more important question is, who's going to stay and help prepare it? I agree. Any takers? I'm not hungry. Besides, I have things to do. I'll make something for myself later. Elizabeth waved a dismissive hand through the air before officially heading off to her bedroom. Ma pouted a little and let out a sigh before turning her smile on you. You didn't make eye contact. If it meant being able to decide what to eat, you would help. Sorry, I can't help. I guess I can help. I'll be head chef. Oh well, why not? If it meant being able to decide what to eat, you would help. 
You were feeling pretty hungry after the shopping trip, and the sooner lunch was made, the sooner you could eat. Can I pick? Of course. Of course. You decided quickly enough what you wanted to eat, and the three of you got started to prepare everything. You all had fun together, talking and laughing in the kitchen. You thought there were worse ways you could spend an afternoon. With lunch out of the way, it was time for you to decide how to spend your afternoon. You glanced around for inspiration. The empty phone caught your eye. You called Derek. You called Lee. Was Lee the cousin? Leanne or something? Leandra? I don't know. Lee was the cousin, right? Yeah, okay. You don't feel like socializing. <laughs> Like spend time deliberating who's this person and then I don't want to call anyone anyway. <laughs> you decided to take some time for yourself. You headed back to your room and closed the door behind you. Social anxiety! Now what? Your head filled with ideas, but at least you picked something. Oof. Played, instrument, wrote, jigsaw, study, art, music. <gasps> this is music. You enjoyed the first song. You could not be described as dancing to it, but you did move according to the beat. The next song really fit your mood. It was a good way to spend your afternoon. You just focused on the music and let it take you away. At that point, you still had some time left to burn. You could probably fit one more thing in your afternoon. You... You... Uh, read. <laughs> Social anxiety, bookworm. You picked up one of your books and got in a comfortable position. You looked forward to seeing where this would go. The front cover drew your attention and you read the title. Frogs, a complete guide. Oh, the gnome and the wyvern cyborg game. A haunting of the Russell Ranch. Ooh. Coffee beans and warm smiles on the gnome and the wyvern. <laughs> you jumped back into chapter 3 and read about the main character Bronwyn Nome. Get into trouble when she got lost in the darkest forest. All by herself with no one looking for her. You wondered how she'd get out of this one. Bronwyn heard a crashing sound like something big had felled a tree and you gripped the book tightly. There were supposed to be dangerous monsters in that forest. Maybe she could hide. When it turned out to be her wyvern friend, you felt relieved. You kept reading and thoroughly enjoyed watching the two unlikely heroes set out on a quest to save the kingdom. The room grew darker as the natural light coming through the windows faded. The evening came, but there wasn't anything to complain about. It was nice and warm, not too hot or cold. Uh, you continue to <laughs> Like, go outside. Who does that? The rest of the evening was peaceful and rather low-key. You enjoyed the calm and were happy that you stayed at the house. You spent a little time with your family and had a few comfortable conversations during dinner. Pretty soon it was time for bed. Another summer day had run its course for you. And nothing happened. <laughs> Growing. <laughs> Early one afternoon, you found yourself in the living room with your family. It was another one of those summer days where it felt too hot to go outside, but it was too uncomfortable to do anything inside either. The air conditioner was cranked up as far as you could negotiate it, but everyone was still being pretty lazy. You, your moms, and sister were lounging around while the TV blared on, on in the backdrop, ignored by all of you. You, specifically, were lying spread eagle on the carpet, sitting cross-legged on the floor, perched on the arm of the couch, draped over the coffee table, perched on the arm of the couch. Elizabeth had claimed the entire couch for herself. It was too hot to argue over the space, so you didn't bother. Elizabeth broke the silence with a loud groan. You glanced over. She was lying on her back over the couch, massaging her calf with one hand. Ugh, I feel terrible. I'm dying in this house, and my legs hurt. Mom looked up from the magazine she'd barely been flipping through and frowned, concerned. Could you have strained them somehow? Elizabeth flailed briefly, then flopped under her side with a heavy sigh. I don't know. It just hurts. Oh, sweetheart. Ma got up from her seat at the kitchen table and walked over to your sister. She did a light pat on Elizabeth's shoulder sympathetically. I'm sorry you have to deal with that. Maybe it's growing pains. You could be taller by next fall. Elizabeth scoffed. She didn't look impressed by Ma's assessment. I'd rather be my height forever than deal with this. Mom walked over too, leaning against the back of the couch. Kids, they grow up so fast. Soon Elizabeth will have a home of her own. Maybe even with a nice husband and some kids if she feels like it. She sniffed loudly and wiped at her eye, but you could tell that it was just a bit... That it was just a bit. Oh, yeah. Like a bit. You tilted your head, even though you knew Elizabeth liked guys. It was hard to imagine her with a boyfriend or a husband. She only seemed invested in hanging out with her group of friends, not chasing after boys. Mom must agree with you, because she shook her head. Let's not exaggerate. She's still practically a child. 
But if you ever do pursue romance, Elizabeth, you can come to talk to me about it. Definitely, we're always willing to lend an ear. Elizabeth's features contorted in disgust. No way, I am not talking to my moms about that. Mom's jaw dropped and she gasped in an exaggerated display of shock. Her hand came up to rest against her chest. Ma only grinned. She didn't look offended by Elizabeth's quick response at all. It really wouldn't be so bad to come to us. I know what it's like to have a crush on a pretty boy or two. <laughs> I don't, but I can listen anyway. <laughs> Mom snorted at her own joke while Ma burst into giggles. They were having a little too much fun at Elizabeth's expense. Elizabeth certainly wasn't feeling the amusement because she rolled her eyes and sat up. I'm going back to my room. I'd rather melt alone, thanks. She strode off toward the staircase, taking the steps two at a time. Your mom stared after her, then turned to each other with raised eyebrows. Whoops, looks like we scared her off with all that romance talk. Well. Oh well, we'll get her next time. <laughs> I'll get you, my pretty. And your little dog, too. You watched them titter with some surprise. Obviously, our moms liked women, but you had no idea that Ma liked guys, too. Today was the first time you'd heard her say something like that. Ma, you like guys and girls? Ma turned to you, happy to bring into, bring you into things now that you'd spoken up. She smiled and nodded. That's right, I like both. But I like your mom most out of everyone. She's special. Aww. Aww, you're happy and blushing. Ma's smile turned all soft in the corners, like it usually did when she looked at her. She pinched Mom's cheek lightly. Mom reached up to check up a hand over Ma's. Even when Ma stopped pulling her cheek, their hands remained clasped together. You're Thanks, Lonnie. I think most women have charm, but no one can hold a candle to you. Aww, Aww Pamela. Aww. Moms are happy. That's a good thing. Ma beamed and then kissed Mom on the cheek she'd been pinching before. He laughed at their antics. You thought the moment was very sweet. You cringed. Parents were embarrassing. He thought them. You smiled to yourself at the sight. No matter how often your moms expressed their feelings for each other, it was always nice to witness it. Ma looked back at to you, letting mom's hand go with a brief squeeze. She settled down next to you, and mom followed soon after. <laughs> you know, I'm also here to listen to you whenever you're ready. That offer isn't just for Elizabeth. She bumped her shoulder with yours, a reassuring smile in place. There's no rush, of course. You can take all the time you need to figure out what or who you want. Don't think you have to stick with whatever you come up with right now, either. Life's nice like that. It can change, and you can learn. Mom nodded her agreement. The two of us are happy to hear you out, and we may be able to relate better than you think. Still, we won't push the topic, at least most of the time. She gave Ma the weakest, scathing look possible, while being unable to stop grinning. You nodded silently, you shrugged. You don't have to worry about it. I'd rather pass on all that. Uh, you shrugged. You had no idea when you'd take them up on that, or if you ever would. Mom let out another exaggerated sniffle. It didn't take a genius to realize it was fate. First Elizabeth, and now you, Risa. Do you have to grow up? <laughs> Must you grow up, my sweet babies? Mm, yes, children tend to do that from time to time. <laughs> I love these moms, they're so cute. <laughs> Your parents quickly grew absorbed in their conversation about rearing kids. You took that as your cue to leave, getting up so you could spend some time alone in your room, too. They let you go without problems, so you made your way up the stairs. You let out a sigh once you stepped into your room. It was just as sweltering in there as it was in the living room, possibly even a little warmer. You couldn't even open your window since it was hotter outside, and you just let the AC out. You dragged your feet as you crossed the room. You checked your current sweltering condition in the mirror as you passed by it. You thought back to the conversation you'd had downstairs about growing up and all that. After a moment, you stepped a bit closer to the mirror. You stared into it, then turned away from the surface to look down at yourself. You were definitely growing all right. It was weird thinking about how you were now in comparison to what you'd been when you were younger. When it came to your body, it... Some muscle definition. It was chubby, it was slender, it was heavy set, it was sort of scrawny. Hmm. 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 Social anxiety. You shifted to the side, your head still facing forward and continuing the self-evaluation from this viewpoint. At birth, you were assigned female and... What you were born has impacted the way your body grew, but it wasn't what really determined who you were. When it came to your figure, you your chest was flat, but that would likely change at least a little as you got older. 
You're starting to develop breasts. You had already noticeable boobs. You aim not to have breasts through hormone therapy. Um, hmm. I think that was true at that time. Uh, standing sideways, it was easy to notice the slight increases in the area. You took a step backwards. You finished with your impromptu inspection. You locked eyes with your reflection, cocking your head to the side. All things considered... You thought you looked fantastic. You didn't look too bad. You had no idea how to feel. You were simply neutral. You were self-conscious. Uh, you just wanted to look different than you did. It took you a moment to realize that you were frowning at yourself. You glanced away from the mirror. You shook your head roughly, putting thoughts of what you were turning into out of your mind. This wasn't the time to focus on such things. You had to find something to do in this heat. You shuffled over to your bed, collapsing onto the mattress, your brow scrunched up in thought. Time passed slowly, and to your annoyance, possible ideas about what to do were few and far between. You weren't sure how long it had been, but eventually you heard your mom call down from upstairs. Call up from downstairs. Wait, yeah. Risa! Cove will be coming over soon, just letting you know. You frowned in confusion, but you didn't bother complaining. It had been decided already. Okay. With a sigh, you pushed yourself off your bed and headed downstairs. Might as well, since you'll be there in a few minutes. You needed to go downstairs soon anyway, because your empty stomach told you it was almost time for lunch. Just as you reached the bottom of the stairs, you saw Mom put the phone back on the receiver. She glanced at Ma, her mouth opening to say something when she caught sight of you. She blinked in surprise. Oh, hi, kiddo. I didn't mean you needed to come down right this second. If you want to wait for him here, though, that's great. We'll get out of your way. You and Cove have fun, all right. Why do you keep trying to set us up? With that, your moms made their way down the hall. You heard the floors creak until they reached their room on the other side of the house. Now that now you were alone in the living room, tasked with waiting for Cove. You weren't exactly thrilled to have to host Cove so suddenly, but you were used to it by now. Who knew what he wanted this time? You took a seat at the kitchen counter and settled in for the wait. As expected, there was a knock on the door a few minutes later. When you got up and answered it, your neighbor was standing on the other side. He came in once you stepped aside to let him pass, giving a little wave. You returned his wave with a half-hearted one of your own before you closed the door behind him. Cove sighed and wiped at his face a bit. You noticed the sheen of sweat across his brow. He must be glad to be back in an air-conditioned place, even if he only had to walk across the street to get there. It must be obvious that you were confused by his visit because he answered your unspoken question. It's too hot to do anything, but my parents don't think so. It's like they don't even notice. I figured coming here would mean I could just sit. Your mom said it was okay. Oh, well, alright, I can get that. If your mom's insisted on doing activities in this heat, you'd want to make a quick escape too. Thankfully, they weren't immune to weather like coves seem to be. Were you doing something? Not really, I just needed to get lunch soon. Um, I haven't eaten anything today. Would it be alright if I had lunch too? You thought about it briefly before not lightly nodding. I guess it should be fine. Oh, as one, you headed into the kitchen. You crossed your arms as you glanced around, wondering what you should scrounge up for a meal. I don't want to eat anything that's warmed up. Is there something cold or not cooked? Yeah. After a bit of back and forth, the two of you concluded that you should raid the fridge and cabinet in order to make sandwiches. With that settled, you had planned on to decide on the outside layers first. There was a wide variety to choose from, since everyone in your house had their own favorites. There was white bread, wheat bread, sour bread, mixed grains, gluten-free bread, and pita pockets. Oh my goodness. Could you take the grain one for me? Sure. You reached for the mixed grains and made your decision. Hmm. Cinnamon swirl bread. A lettuce wrap. White bread. Sourdough. Uh... Hmm. Fuck it, that's good. You wanted mixed grains as well, so you just set that on the counter. Then you had to decide what the main direction the sandwich would go in. You wanted to make a sweeter style, you wanted to make a savory style. Something savory would make it feel like a real meal. As for the specific ingredients... who? Hmm. 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 Scale the... Oh, I noticed that there's no meat here, because I said earlier that I'm vegetarian. <laughs> That's probably why anyway, I assume. Uh, let's start with some avocado. Let's put some tomatoes, some cucumbers, some lettuce. Hmm. 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 Some mozzarella, and then... The finishing touch you intended to top your sandwich with. Well, th this sandwich sounds good to me right now. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. 
I do like mayo and ranch. Hmm. Not together, but like as different things. Hmm. A little bit of ranch. Uh, sure. You nod to yourself with a quiet hum satisfied. The two of you bustled around the kitchen, opening and closing things in order to collect everything you needed for your individual sandwiches. You focused intently on assembling your own for the most part. When you were close to being done, though, you glanced over at your neighbor. Cove was putting his sandwich together delicately, his brow furrowed and tongue sticking out just barely. There were open jars of peanut butter and honey near his plate, as well as a banana peel. So he was making a peanut butter, banana, and honey sandwich on mixed grain bread. Peanut butter and banana is good, but... Why honey? I didn't think much of it. It's just the honey that's throwing me off. I've had peanut butter and banana sandwiches, but never with honey. Ugh. It wasn't that surprising or interesting. Curiously satiated, you turned your back to your plate and finished your own creation. By the time you were done, Cove had already cleaned up his workstation. Oh, I can see a scar on his arm. He turned to face you, studying your sandwich briefly. A small smile tugged at the corners of his mouth. You guessed it didn't look inedible to him, at least. Done? Yeah. Cool. cool. He waited as you quickly returned the ingredients and cleaned a few utensils. Then the two of you collected your respective plates. You both agreed on heading upstairs to hang out in your room. You and Cove entered your bedroom while balancing your food on the plates. Nothing fell, so it was a successful trip. Cove took a seat on the ground, stretching out on the hardwood floor in an attempt to keep a bit cooler. He immediately took a big bite of a sandwich, chewed, then hummed happily. This sandwich is really good. At least that's something. At this point, you start, sat down and started your own sandwich. You nodded. You were enjoying yours, too. You shrugged. It was okay. You scratched your face up. This did not turn out as expected. No, you are enjoying yours, too. Obviously, you were a pro at making sandwiches. The best. He leaned back on his hands while chewing and glanced around. His every movement was sluggish. Wanna do something? It seemed the plan of not doing anything at all had already worn thin, despite his lack of enthusiasm. Like what? He rolled his head back, looking up at the ceiling. What about tic-tac-toe? <laughs> he laughed at the suggestion, but went along with it. Yeah, neither of you had much more energy for, much energy for something more taxingly. You grudgingly humored it. You thought it was a nice idea. <laughs> you put your plate to the side and pulled out some markers and scrap paper. As you laid everything on the floor, he scooted back to make more room in front of you. Cove picked up one of the markers with his right hand while keeping half a half slice of sandwich in his left. All right. I want to be X's, so you can go first. I think that's fair. Okay. You prepared to note down your first move. Your marker hovering over the paper. Ooh, we're actually... Okay. Sure. Hmm. At the f after the first round, you were about to take another bite of your sandwich when a thought occurred to you. I wonder if anyone turned off the TV downstairs. Hmm? The TV, it was on earlier, but no one was really watching. Then everyone started leaving the living room. I know I didn't turn it off. It might still be on downstairs with no one there. Cove smiled crookedly at that. Poor show, playing with no one around to enjoy it. <laughs> what was it? Uh, you squinted off in the middle of, into the middle distance. What? Trying to recall the show's name. I feel like it was some kind of crime-solving drama. Cove nodded sleepily, his eyes closed, then opened again with some effort. Can you give me any susp specifics? Maybe I can guess it. Hmm, well... You rested your chin on your open palm, groggily thinking as hard as you could. I remember there was a woman with long blonde hair, I think? She was the one solving crimes, like, as a detective or something. <laughs> oh, I see. Miss Scarlet and the Duke. <laughs> it's a crime show I started watching recently. There were scenes in a police station, because someone got arrested? You lapsed into silence, the both of you thoughtful, then Cove chuckled. It wasn't that funny, but you joined in the laughter anyway. I don't know what that is. Me neither, and I just saw it. Ba -ba -da, ba -ba -da. Another round came and went, and Cove grumbled as he readjusted himself. His features were twisted in a grimace. Oh, I feel so sticky. Ugh. I'm gonna be stuck to this floor forever now. I'll have to charge you rent. <laughs> you can be my new roomie. Looks like we'll both be stuck here forever then. No way I'll peel you off if I have to. You just smiled at his whining. It was always funny to hear Cove be so dramatic. You smiled to yourself. Then you returned to the game. 
Cove spoke up once more, catching your attention. He was peering down at the piece of paper between you, his expression thoughtful. I'm about to win. You know, tic-tac-toe is such a weird name for a game. What does it even mean? Maybe they named it because people played with ticks and tacks? Always wondered about it. I'll have to look it up later. It's a really old game. No one's sure where the name came from. Really? Nobody knows? Not for sure. Wow. <laughs> Cove sounded impressed that you knew that piece of trivia. You sat up straighter under the weight of his stare. I win. Oh, you won. <laughs> Did you try to win? Not really. He smiled at you in an amused way. You somehow weren't surprised by that, despite Cove being the one who suggested the game in the first place. He started to... <sighs> Damn it. His hand came up, covering his mouth. It quickly transitioned into a small laugh. You understand... You understood why. Hunting, just as he said he was feeling disinterested, was kind of a funny incident. Oh, oh my goodness. I hate that about myself. Every time. Every time it's so annoying. You laughed along with Cove. Uh, well, you should have taken the challenge more seriously. You're the one who wanted to play. I'm still the winner and you're the loser. Yeah, you laughed along. Cove just grinned and flopped onto his back, leaving his marker on the floor beside him. You followed Cove's lead and laid on your back, your hands resting on your stomach. The two of you stayed like that for a while, silent. There wasn't much else to say, and neither of you felt to, up to another game after that. Time passed. You even dozed off for a bit, despite the hot weather and uncomfortable hardwood floor underneath you. Finally, the blazing sun began to set. To your relief, the air cooled down a bit as a result. You pulled yourself off the floor, as did Cove, with some minor complaint. You both stretched your arms, groaning and yawned into your... <sighs> Hands. Ugh, I didn't even realize. You glanced out your window briefly, taking in the soft reds, pinks, and purples of the late afternoon sky. Some of you had made it through the scorching hot day in one piece. Jeez, the people upstairs are noisy. Cove turned towards you, rubbing the back of his neck. Um, thanks for letting me stay over. You nodded, giving him a tight smile. Cove also looked out the window, noting the sun's descent. Bye. I should probably go home now. Bye. Bye. Then he simply walked out of your room and made his way downstairs, while you followed close behind. You needed to get out of your room anyway so you could grab something to drink. Cove made it to the front door hall, then glanced over his shoulder at you. He waved. You waved back, watching as he opened the front door and left. He let out a small breath. You felt pretty good in the moment. Looking back, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Could have been worse. <laughs>